I wanted to be three things when I was a kid. I wanted to be a cowboy, I wanted to be Luke Skywalker, and I wanted to be a chef. First real cooking that I did, I remember playing with my Hot Wheels upstairs and going downstairs and telling mommy, if you love me, you're gonna make me chocolate chip cookies. And she said, you're now old enough to like be able to read, here's the bag. And so I took all the ingredients, the cold butter, the flour, and just dumped it in without reading the instructions, just turned it on high, and it went everywhere, obviously. But for some reason, that whole thing kind of sparked. My brothers were both very excited. It was like this magical thing. I enjoyed it. So that was a huge part of it, is not just the creating of something, but at the end of the day, people saying, that was not bad. So when we started, you know, we were just a cheese shop, meant to be really accessible. Uh, so we had a $10 bottle of wine at the time, then we started serving the bread, and that side just took off. We were hitting a two hour wait. Then when the Lou's moved from this point to next door, the landlord came up and said, hey, do you wanna? And I said, yes, I do, so he moved over here. Yes, we're doing cheese, and it's like, well, we can make some money if we did some cheese and wine. When you ask the majority of Fort Collins, you know, all oh, the Welsh rabbits are like, oh, that's the place you go and build your own cheese and charcuterie plate, drink some wine, hang out, you know, chat. And then, yeah, their small plates are kind of fun too. Since most people come in for the cheese and charcuterie, our small white menu can be as eclectic as we want it to be. It's a big world, and for some reason, all we eat is chicken, pork, beef, and some people eat fish. It's the stuff that is more of a challenge. There's all this different stuff out there, either what it actually is as a product or how you prepare it. Here we want you to try the snails. We want you to try something that's slightly different. So I'm sitting here as this place is opening. I'm like, I need a dish. And I'm thinking, okay, bagels and lox. So we're gonna replace the lox something, right? Because obviously we're not gonna be doing smoked salmon. I love quail, so there's the protein. So basically it's a quail, most of the bones removed, seared in a pan with sage, because sage is one of God's favorite things in the world. And so what else? You know, bagels and lox to me is a very Jewish thing. Ooh, they do those little potato pancakes. So that replaces the bagels. Well, now we need to replace the sour cream. Well, this cream sauce, we can make that a little bit more of our own. We'll do a cider instead of the brandy that's in it. Capers. Well, pickled vegetables. We torch the sage because it smells lovely. It's just, you know, kind of a fun little one more interaction with that plate as the smoke comes up. And you're like, do I eat this? Do I spit on it and put it out? How do I deal with this? But off we go. <laughs> Delightfully nuts. I think my favorite thing is being up here and, and serving and hearing him laugh in the back for whoever comes in. I gravitated towards working here because they're more attentive to the diner's experience and that's, that's more than most of the chefs that I've worked for. When people ask what kind of food do you do here, it's kind of hard to box it up. Because a lot of stuff is beyond people's comfort level. It's been more about what they're walking into, the atmosphere that's set, the way in which our servers and us as cooks behind the bar interact with the guests and use this stage to encourage them to try something they haven't tried before. When you surround your people with the crew that I have, you know, the ideas just, they just pop. The 
staff quickly learns I look really mad, but I'm having a lot of fun and I'm just really concentrating and trying not to let my mind wander off. And you know, that part, I don't know if I'll ever be that guy that's not in the kitchen. I hope not.